Good afternoon. My name is Jill Lay. I'm a clinical nurse specialist in cardiac surgery from California Pacific Medical Center in San Francisco, and I'm delighted to be coming to you today from EAX Live in Lisbon. I'm joined by two colleagues that are here to talk about a fantastic mission experience in Ghana. Uh, first, Enoch Akawa from South Tees in the UK, right. and um, also Percy Botang from Mount Sinai in New York. So these gentlemen have come from across the world um, to help make sure that patients in Ghana receive appropriate cardiothoracic care. So let me start by asking you how you got involved in this to begin with. Yeah, well, I think like most doctors, nurses, healthcare professionals, you always kind of wonder whether you can uh, do some philanthropic work outside your, your own area of, um, of work. And so um, I came across um, a Ghanaian surgeon actually on LinkedIn. And we hooked up and he told me about he, he was moving from India back to Ghana and wanted to set up a, a unit back in Ghana. So that's how the first contact was made. Um, and then I paid a visit to the hospital to see what was there, just to kind of get a feel for what we could do. And then after that, um, I, I had to come back and convince others that it was a good idea, because clearly I couldn't do it on my own. Absolutely. Um, and um, I started over two, then six, then eventually 12 colleagues um, who decided that we'll go on a mission to Ghana. So that's how it started. Uh, and we eventually did that mission in February, February last year. Wow, so that personal connection was made. Um, and how did you get involved with this? Um, I, I think, just like Enoch said, it's sort of the same uh, mindset when you, you, know, you get to a point in your career, you start thinking about uh, what can you do to give back to uh, those less fortunate. And I had this interest, and I started making some exploratory trips to Ghana uh, back three or four years ago, um, and eventually, you know, we, we, you know, I'm involved in a different project, you know, called the CSIA, uh, the Cardiac Surgery and Society Alliance, um, which we can talk about a little later. But uh, it's just sort of the same burning, um, you know, sensation or need to give back to those less fortunate is how it got me interested in this humanitarian effort. I think you're alluding to the Cape Town Declaration. That's absolutely correct, And uh, yeah. I would love to hear a little bit more about how that's changing uh, what we're thinking in terms of approach for uh, trips of this nature. Sure. So the, the main goal of the Cape Town De Declaration is to increase access to cardiac surgery for those who are less fortunate. Uh, but again, the, fo the, the, the ultimate goal is to train and maintain local capacity as opposed to flying missions that go in and do you know, just a one-time trip and then leave and not, not come back for 12 or so many months. Uh, so that's the main goal is to identify local talent, local um, teams, train them, make them self-sufficient, and then do surgery independent of flying missions. Yeah. That sounds like a fantastic goal. And have you found teams to be receptive to that? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I think when I first went to Ghana in February this year, I was always acutely aware that I didn't want to just fly and do a mission and fly out again. And um, it was obvious when I got there, the need is so great. Um, there's no way that fly in, fly out missions are going to cope with that need. You need to establish a sustainable, independent cardiac surgery service. So that goal was obvious when I arrived. And the team there absolutely signed up to that. That's what they want for themselves. Clearly, they want to be able to provide that service for their own people. And that's from the management down to clinicians and obviously for the patients as well. So, so that was always our aim, but of course, y you do need to start to form those relationships. You need to understand what's, what, what's on the ground. You need to get to know the people you're working with. Um, and you need to understand the challenges that you've got to really navigate to be able to reach that ultimate goal. Mm -hmm. And we're very much in the process of doing that. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that was obvious um, uh, as soon as we arrived is that although money is a challenge, the biggest challenge is expertise. It, it really is a human resource. Uh, expertise is clearly the biggest deficit because that you can't you can't get overnight. That requires time and training, uh, and so uh, one of the things we did when we got there was work with the hospital to try and, and bring the team back to the UK to get trained, and that that was always an ambition. We never thought it would happen because it's such an expensive thing to do, and there's a huge amount of regulatory um, hurdles to cross when you, you yeah. do that. But I'm glad to say that um, over the last month, we've had 10 members of the team from Ghana in the UK working with us. And that's a surgeon, a perfusionist, anesthetist, nursing staff, et cetera. Uh, and they just went back last weekend. It's been a wonderful time, uh, and they've learned so much. And it's, it's been great to see their skills come on. Uh, oh, that's outstanding. 
And um, what sorts of uh, training are you seeing moving forward? Are these uh, individuals then training more and more groups of people after you leave? Are they relying on you to come back? Well, uh, along the same model that Enoch is describing is that the goal is to identify facilities that already have a core group or a, a, a local, we call a local champion, that is already doing cardiac surgery, but at constraints by you know, the human resource factors or financial factors. Uh, and our goal is to you know, enable this team to grow further, and then ultimately they will become a local hub for training further people Perfect. and local teams to do the same thing we're doing and, and sort of disseminate it across uh, the, the, the nation and the, and the, the world wide. It's a fantastic model. Uh, you talked of challenges. What would you say was your greatest challenge with your February trip? Well, I think we all have an idealistic kind of view of these things when we go. Um, one of the best moves we made uh, in February was we, we made contact with a lady called Emily Farkas. Dr. Farkas works for Cardiostat, which is a, an international charity that's been doing heart surgery around the world for several decades. And, and really, uh, we use Emily as our mission proctor, if you like, uh, because um, so much experience is required. She knew the challenges that we'll come across. She knew um, what will work and what won't work, and she was able to help us to plan for those eventualities. And I remember speaking to her on the phone maybe six months before we went, and she said, uh, have you got a biomedical engineer to take with you? And that's something that hadn't even occurred to me because I have to confess I have no idea who the biomedical engineers in my hospital are because everything just works and it seems to happen and I turn up and they work. Uh, and, and of course, um, I was a bit skeptical about taking, but, but we did take one with us and oh boy, oh boy, was that a useful uh, person to have because of course, we found that a lot of the equipment, although it was there, just didn't work. Okay. And if it did work, it only worked for a while and then stopped working, usually when you needed it most. And so having someone on the ground as part of the team to fix these uh, equipment as, as they broke down at, you know, immediately was absolutely uh, critical and it, it certainly saved at least two lives that I can think about. Oh my but goodness, that, I wouldn't have even thought challenge. of that. Exactly. That's great. exactly. And how about you? What did you find the most challenging about the trip? Um, my challenge with, with my trips in terms of what I'm doing now, and I'm, I'm trying to work in coordinate with Enoch to work in the same institution to move his agenda forward and get it to fruition and see you know, sustainability, growth, uh, independence, and uh, autonomy of the local team. Um, is, is, the, is the political landscape that yes. you walk into. Uh, the, this is unspoken rules and unspoken uh, expectations that you have and they have and somehow they're not able to uh, effectively articulate that to you. Uh, they may have reservations about things you propose but they, they, they find it a little difficult to tell you that you know this is not going to work because they see your passion and they want to match the passion but they're not exactly how sure how to you know say that without alienating your, 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 your passion or your mission. Mm -hmm. So I think that was the challenges that I noticed. It's, just, it's not as clear you know like you know, said, you know, we, we are very idealistic and in the West everything works perfectly and there's, there's policies and procedures in place that guarantee things will work and if they don't work, there's recourse and there's way to uh, look back. But, you know, in places where there's really barely any cardiac surgery or any infrastructure, there's no one in charge sometimes. There's somebody in charge, but they're not really in charge, <laughs> and, you know, and, and you can't ask for help when you need it. So, right. Yeah. I can't imagine planning something like this. So certainly dealing with somebody who's done this before seems like that would be key. Um, what about equipment? Is that, were you also bringing lots of things with you on this yeah, trip? Yeah, no, we, we did. So um, when we went in February, we had a 20 foot container that we shipped in advance of our mission. That went three months ahead of us. Okay. Uh, and it contained absolutely everything we'd need to do the operations. And that's from from needles to syringe drivers to you know bypass. Uh, so you brought everything you thought you heart would valves, need. absolutely everything. Perfect. Um, and so yeah, it's a big logistical undertaking. Mm -hmm. um, but as, as Percy said, the key thing is really understanding your partner. You mm -hmm. know, so understanding what they've got, what they need, really kind of um, getting that relationship right, mm -hmm. um, and then that everything else flows flows from that. Really. Mm -hmm. 
and I understand that there is a scholarship, the STS has really, uh, and these organizations are looking at trying to fund uh, mission trips such as this, and, and uh, there's a process for doing that. So um, I'm wondering about you know, what sorts of criteria you would want to see in, in a facility before you would want to venture in there to try and work with them. Sure, so the, um Along the, 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 the mission of the Cape Town Declaration, that, that bore out the CSIA, the Credit Surgery Inter Society Alliance. And what the alliance has been taxed with is, again, identifying programs that have the ability to succeed in doing independent surgery. And, you know, us supporting them either through logistical support, uh, financial support, or, you know, mentoring. Uh, and the things that we, we had about six tenets, one was to have a local champion who will be the driving force on the ground and making sure that we succeed because without somebody with passion actually being your advocate, this is bound to fail. Mm -hmm. uh, we needed a government to sign on to the, the, the whole thing. The local government has to be a, a, a partner in this, else again, you fail. Uh, the hospital has to be you know, committed because you don't want a hospital where you walk in and you want to do surgery and the next day they say, well, you know, you don't have a TFA to do the surgery in because neurosurgery needs the room. Um, you need the space, you need the staff, and we don't want the staff to be taken away in the middle of an operation to go to something else on the day you plan. Uh, we need them to have sort of a business plan and a goal um, for a you know, two-year, three-year, five-year plan to say this is where we see ourselves doing surgery independently the next five or six years. And also commit to research quality and, and to partner with uh, a third, you know, a, 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 an institution in a First, I call it first world country that will help him, you know, be an ongoing mentor. So those are the things that we're looking for. And uh, to date, we've been able to identify um, three places we're going to visit soon. Uh, with, you know, we had an, a call for applications and proposals that was put out through all the national papers, and all this generated about ten solid applications from Asia, from Africa, um, and all these are fantastic programs that all mean well. There's a great need. But ultimately, we have to select the best program that has a chance to succeed. So um, that's what we're looking for in the, in the place. That sounds like an, an amazing process, and I'm, I'm really delighted that the societies are moving forward with it. Sure. It certainly deserves the attention that it's received. So if I were thinking about one of these trips myself, what would you tell me I need to think about? <laughs> I think, so I think the most important thing is, is go to the right place. So find a local, a local person to liaise with. Um, you're going to need a team. Mm -hmm. uh, so you need lots of enthusiastic people around you because it's hard work. Probably a surgeon. <laughs> <laughs> it, well, you, you, yeah, the whole team is important. Yes. The, the quality of nursing is usually an issue. Mm -hmm. Perfusion is definitely an issue. Mm -hmm. um, you know, OR nursing staff is an issue. So you need, you need a team. Mm -hmm. um, they need to be enthusiastic. They need to be kind of prepared for a challenge. Um, the one thing I will say is great fun, uh, and it's oh. massively fulfilling. I mean, I think um, I don't want to be. I mean, it's a challenge, but you, you get so much out of it, and, and you learn so much out of it. Because actually, when you get there, what you find are, are professionals who are doing their very best in the most challenging circumstances. Mm -hmm. And the one thing they are are ingenious at finding ways around the problems that they have, and you learn so much from them. So it, it's a hugely exciting thing to do, massively fulfilling. And yeah, if you want to do it, I'll definitely say definitely press on with it because it's, it's worth doing. Wonderful, and I don't know how you're going to select from those applicants to come up with only one, but hopefully this will be something that is sustained in the future and the societies can offer more in, the, in, in years to come. Absolutely, that's the goal. The goal is to select one, as a, one or two as a pilot yes. and demonstrate success, and once we have demonstration that this is actually going to work, then we'll sort of broaden this whole thing out to much you know, larger areas, different hospitals, so what well, we told most of the applicants that, you know, um, don't waver in your enthusiasm, that, you know, whatever you put in now, we're going to put it on hold mm -hmm. and put you in a sort of a, a database that as we grow, we get more experience uh, because as you know, alluded to, you know, you don't know what it is until you're actually on the ground with these programs. You know, the application may look fantastic on paper, but when you get to the ground, then you really have to deal with all the unknowns, then it becomes a different story. So. Uh, once we demonstrate that we can actually make this work, you know, with the backing of all the societies, the AATS, STS, um, EX, and uh, the Asian Association of Cardiothoracic Surgery, and we actually have uh, with us uh, the World Health Federation as one of the signatories of this process. So, Outstanding. Um, it's, it's, it's the goal is to touch every continent where there's un, an un, unmet need. So, 
in the future, maybe the next five, 10 years, we'll see programs you know, in Africa, multiple places in Africa, Asia for sure, South America, um, to make sure that this is, um, you know, as the president talked about today, is that you know, this, this, this is an impact that we have to make on a global scale, and this is the time to do it. It is incredibly um, exciting to think that the societies are moving in this direction and changing all of these lives. And I want to personally thank both of you for the patients that you've impacted and for being here today. Right. So thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. It. Thank, thank you, you very much. Nice thank you. Thank you.